Hello and welcome to Follow the Boat's latest update. And we are still in the UK in one of our favourite locations. What are we doing here Liz? Well first of all it's a favourite location because it's a pub and we love pubs. And uh, it's August, it's the height of summer in the UK. We're having breakfast in the pub and because it's summer and it's the UK, they've got the fire going. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna see this week? I think we're gonna move away from cold uh, British summer, aren't we, and get back to some nice uh, tropical heat. Yeah, we are. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna go take you back to Thailand and we're going to see us doing a little bit of sailing. We're going north, we're leaving Bhutan's, which is as far as we've got on Esper so far. So we got out of the boatyard, we got been to Langkawi and the Bhutan's back and forth a few times, but now we're tentatively heading north on our way to Phuket. So what can we expect to see in this episode? We're going to see one of our most favourite anchorages in the whole world, which we just came across having no idea it's going to be as beautiful as this. And we're going to see loads more of fishing. <laughs> okay. Let's crack on with it. Hope you enjoy. Butang, we have just been anchored, and over here is uh, Koh Rawi, which is the island we were anchored opposite. Just after sunrise, a bit of a struggle getting out. There was quite a strong current coming through there, which is odd because where we were anchored, we had the current running against us, so we were facing east. And as we came out, the current was running east. So some kind of effect of the uh, the island and the uh, the tides and. We were down to two and a half knots at one point, so we had a good uh, two knots of current, but it was just as we came around that island. How do I know that? I know that because we've just cleared our boat log, which means that we can actually monitor the boat speed. And the boat speed is the speed at which the boat moves through the water, so not a speed over ground. And it's a little paddle wheel underneath the uh, hull in the water, that is measuring the rate at which the water passes over the hull. So that effectively gives you an idea of how fast the boat is going through the water. And so if your boat is only going two knots over ground, but four knots through the water, then you know you have about two knots of current. Anyway, I only say this because we haven't had our log uh, working for a while. They clog up very quickly, normally within a couple of days. And um, it makes um, it quite frustrating because you have to go underneath and clean the log or you pull it out the hull and get lots of water everywhere. Whatever. The important thing is that young madam is comfortable on her throne. started having a go at me about the water maker and the fact it's not plumbed in yet. It doesn't work. I want to have a shower every day like I used to. And who's going to fix the water maker? You are. It's your job. When am I going to do this? Tomorrow. It's not going to happen. I'll help. Tell us about today then. Today we left the beautiful Bhutangs just uh, north of Langkawi. Um, Koh Butang itself is where we were, and uh, we left there this morning. Crack of sparrows, we left about, about I think, 6.10, I think, so I put in the log. And uh, it's pretty much north, straight north, about 40 miles. But we bloody motored the whole way, so <laughs> that was a bit depressing because there was no wind really. You managed to get the sail out for a bit. Well, it was only to stabilise the boat, yeah. just put the mainsail out. There, there was it was behind us, there was five knots of wind and when you're motoring up five knots it uh, 
there's no, it's basically no wind. Yeah, I mean, we were warned that there's more motoring than sailing in this part of the world, and so far that's true. But if the north, uh, sorry, the southwest monsoon kicks in in the next few weeks, we should have a bit of wind. We'll probably be going the wrong way, but we might be able to get some sailing in. Anyway, so that was the day, and um, didn't really, wasn't very eventful. I saw some dolphins, which is always, always lovely. Uh, when you see dolphins, it's like seeing them for the first time, every time. They just bring you joy. Uh, and I put some lines out, but I didn't catch anything. But what was quite interesting is when I brought one of the lures in, it's got two big chunks out of it, which are not where the hooks hit. As people often think, oh, look, someone, something's been going for. Hooks swing round. <laughs> Sorry, fishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you didn't catch anything. Nope, didn't catch anything. Tell us about where we are now. This is a uh, Co Rock Knock and Co Rock Rye. Is that? Is it Rye that one? No, Nye. Nye, North. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, North and South in this case, but some of the islands are Nine Yai, I think, North and South. But yeah, uh, yeah well, okay. Let me let me just tell you what almost happened. We almost had a Maldives moment here because for some reason I decided to go and investigate what I thought would be a nice little anchorage over there and the depth dropped away from 20 metres to 2 metres in the space of about 10 seconds and um, Liz was busy looking over the bow examining all the coral as uh, we approached it at a rather uh, fast speed. Fast. Yep. So I whacked it in a stern I said, and go uh, back! Get the hell out of here. We then tried to anchor and uh, that wasn't too successful. Well it was, the anchor held, but I went down and had a look and it's rock and sand. Well it's actually uh, broken coral and rock and sand and the anchor had uh, wrapped itself around a little rock that if the wind had changed direction we would have found ourselves dragging until it caught onto the next rock which was much bigger. So the idea of being stuck here 12 metres of water and having to dive down to free the anchor didn't particularly excite me. So, what have we done? We're on a mooring buoy, which is probably what we should have done in the first place. They're, they're, um, they're put here by the um, marine park people, and the pilot guide we're using says use them. So, we're using it. it looks pretty sturdy to me. Do you want to dive down and inspect it? Nah, not really. Nah. I think it's fine. A skipper. We're also the a skipper, only I'm tasking here. you with the job of diving in the You're complaining about not being able to wash and shower. Go and rinse yourself off by going for a little dive down there and in, in, inspecting the uh, the tackle. I'll, have a, I'll go in the water. Well, we've been, right behind you is this fantastic reef. Yeah. You can see this beach here, and it goes out to a very shallow reef that's got to be explored another Liz special, she's had the rod in for two minutes, if that. Look at the rod, it's going to break. Rod. It's only a kid's rod. Whatever that is, that's big. Jesus! Oh. <laughs> you might need to get the gaff out. Go on Liz, work it, work it. Oh, he is big. I can see him. I think I do need the gun. That was another one that got away. What happened to the lure? Well, there was a, just a little bit of bread to get a small fish for Millie, but we actually put something that was bigger than Millie. It was the most beautiful uh, type of parrotfish. I'd have to look up which one it was. Sadly, the big one got away, but I did manage to hook quite a few bream. More on that later. In the meantime, we take the dinghy out to that reef we spotted earlier. Being at the end of the tourist season and at the beginning of the transitional period meant that there were no other tourists around. This also meant we had the beautiful beach to ourselves. I'm left to haul the dinghy out onto the shore while Jamie takes the pretty footage. Sometimes I wonder if our roles are the right way round. We're in Konok Rock and uh, this is the side there's nobody on at all. It's the beach that we've got uh, 
tide going out at the moment and we've just got found some fantastic shade. It hasn't had any sun on it all day so it's really cool here, it's lovely. Yeah, because it's hot out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a cloudless really day and uh, of course, middle of the day as well, we've decided to, um, you know, go do a bit of snorkeling. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why we're all dressed, because we don't want to burn too much, so we need to cover up a bit, because it's really, really um, strong sun here. Go on then, in you go. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking, Liz? What I'm thinking is quite simply that we spent a year in a smelly boatyard in southern Thailand, refitting Esper so that we could carry on our journey. And then when I sit here and I look at this little piece of perfection, this is really why we did it. This is what we haven't had for since the Maldives. It's really, really beautiful here. And this is the sort of thing that um, I used to dream about when I sat at my desk in cold, smelly, wet London. The idea of this kind of life where we can just pull up any time we feel like um, at one of these anchorages here and we've got the beach to ourselves and it's perfect, it's perfect white coral sand all the cliches that's what I think that's what I'm thinking One happy customer We spend some time frolicking in the warm waters and take the dinghy out around the north side of the southern island a place normally popular with tourists but at this time of year it was pretty empty. We continue on our little poodle around the bay in the dinghy and head over to the shallow coral bombies we'd almost hit earlier. According to the pilot guide, there's a sunken catamaran somewhere around here. Where are we now, Liz? Uh, we're between Co Rock Knot and Co Rock Nye in the dinghy at sunset. A lot of uh, reefs and bombies around here. Loads, yeah. Sandy bottom at where we are, but on each side there's bombies and there's a lot of fish life. Everywhere and we go, there's full of fish. And apparently there's a catamaran here somewhere, a sunken yeah, catamaran. That's right, where is it? Well, I think it's probably straight ahead in between us and the uh, boat behind. Okay. Let's see if, Should we go slowly and see? Yeah, we'll see find if we can it. find it. Found the catamaran. It's a, I don't know if it's a Hobie cat. Can't really tell actually. Let's see if we can get in a bit closer. That's a lot bigger than a Hobie cat. That's so There's weird. something quite unsettling about seeing a sunken boat, especially as earlier we'd come close to hitting coral ourselves. With the sun disappearing fast, it's almost time to head back to Esper, but not before a quick peek at the North Island of Koh Rock Noi. tourist season this island opens up to visitors with a camp, basic facilities and a restaurant. But when we get here it is inhabited by a couple of rangers only. One thing you will notice about the islands in this area is the constant reminder of the tsunami of 2004 that devastated this part of the world. The islands have now marked safety zones in the event of a repeat occurrence. After a quick paddle, it was time to return to Esper once more and tuck into some fresh fish. Rather splendid sunset, setting away there with a little yacht in front that's just uh, turned up. Today, Liz caught at least five fish, well, five fish this afternoon. She caught a couple this morning as well, which 
Millie devoured. I'll show you those. But she caught four bream and we've decided to barbecue them. So this is our barbecue setup. It's gas. I used to have a charcoal one, very messy. So we switched over to gas and this is the, the barbie that we got made in India for $50, materials and labour. Look at that. And then we got it polished up in PSS. So that's our barbie hanging off the back there. There's a few remainders of uh, the fish heads of the bream and also there's a little mackerel there that Millie has sort of, um, how can we say, she's just uh, had a little, little snack on it and she's saving the rest for later. So, Sunset Barbie, we haven't done this for a while, looking forward to it though. How does it smell Liz? Now is that your cooking or my cooking or your marinade? I think it's a joint effort. Oh, how diplomatic. It looks good though. Yes, it's a bit too much juice, that should have so remained. We've got one large and one small bream each. Core. Potatoes too, but I think fish needs eating first. Right, let's have a look. Let's open him up and have a look, shall we? Oh, look at that. It's falling off look the bone. Look at that. Falling off the bone, not overcooked. Just perfectly barbecued. Let me just taste it. Hot. Mm. Good? Oh, that's really good. Excellent. Wow. I'm happy about that. Well done, baby. So that's Lizzie's fishing. Six fish today, four for us, two for Millie. Millie had a mackerel. Yeah, well she's had half a mackerel. Yeah. That's lovely flesh. Great. Right, stop filming, start eating. <laughs> Next morning, we awake to an almighty thunderstorm. It had been coming in from the west, appeared to meet another storm coming from the east, and then hovered over our anchorage for some hours. So, no pretty sunrise for you this morning. That is a huge storm that's been going over us for the whole of the night, from the west to the east. So in fact what you can see there is, um, is night time, looking east, very, very, very dark clouds. If I was sailing now heading towards that I think I would be pooing my pants. The storm stretches from there to over there. So all night we've been watching lightning light up the sky all the way around. Not sure whether we should actually be leaving today, it's a difficult one to call. We're too far away to get a weather forecast. We did get one just before we left, previous destination, so we have some idea of what we have. But uh, apart from a bit of precipitation, this sort of thing wasn't forecast really. So... We have another 35 odd miles to do in open water, so... Not quite sure what the sea state's going to be like once we get out of the side of these islands. But um, as I was just talking then I noticed I could see more lightning straight through there. Which is supposed to be the end of the storm. Okay, so a slight change to what I'd said earlier. This is a storm coming this way. So in fact what happened last night was a storm came from west to east and um, about four or five o'clock in the morning it passed this storm and this one's coming this way. So we were getting ready to sail out today 
lashed everything down and um, closed all the hatches, about to get ready to go and then we realised this is actually getting closer. It's getting closer still now and the fishing boats on the horizon are starting to disappear. I can one imagine there's a great big uh, bank of rain heading our way. So we've put all the buckets out so we can collect some fresh water. And we're trying to bring Millie in. Come on Mills. Good girl. Good day for a sail. There's a bit of wind, that's for sure, yeah. Well what are we waiting for then? I don't really fancy sailing out into the lightning. We don't have to, and we don't have to. I think we'll just wait. Let the decks get wet, hopefully, and then make a move later. And we've seen some pretty nasty lightning as well, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, really, really big, big forks, both here and here. So, explain to uh, our viewers out there the Faraday effect. What it is, why us yachties do it. Um, well, there's the Faraday oven. I don't really know the whole theory, but if you put your electronic equipment into the oven, shut the door, seal it, if you get hit by lightning, um, it saves that particular piece, those pieces of equipment. So if we get hit by lightning, everything will go down, all our electronics, electrics, everything will go down. But anything that we've put in the oven will be safe. So we've put the other camera, we've put tablets, telephone, um, Jamie's computer. Much as we would have liked to have made the most of those winds, we certainly weren't going to risk sailing into that weather. So we sat it out and waited until the skies cleared, before moving north towards the island of Pipi Don. Well that just about wraps up everything for this episode, and despite what Liz said at the beginning, there wasn't really that much fishing. There's plenty of fish though, and those bream are beautiful, which is one of the highlights of doing what we're doing. Next episode, I think we're going to head even further north, uh, possibly as far as Alchalong, I'm not sure. Let's have a quick sneaky peek at what happens in the next episode. In the next episode, we actually get some sailing in and we get a little bit too close to passing tourist boats. And we get a bit of a culture shock when we land on the island of Pipi. Great, well we look forward to the next episode and I hope you do too. In the meantime, don't forget to follow, follow the boat. Follow the boat. Follow the boat. <laughs> follow the boat. Follow the boat. Follow the boat. Oh, 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 oh,